another up close video. This one is looking at the Arteza 36 pan watercolour set. They also do a 12 pan watercolour set, uh, which obviously has less colours and just has the 12 colours in the set. Um, but I asked for the 36 set so that I could um, really experiment with lots of the different colours and the techniques and things. Um, and Arteza were really kind um, to send me all of the Arteza products that I'm using in this video. and. And, um, as well as them being really generous and sending me all these products to use, they've also um, given you a 10% discount code to use. Um, so if you use the links in the description below and purchase any of this stuff or anything else off their website from the actual Arteza UK or USA websites, and you put this code in, Crafty Potential 2, you will get 10% off of your order. And uh, this is valid until the 28th of August. And I'll make sure to put the code just down here. And I'll put it um, as the first thing in the description below the video as well. So you can easily just copy and paste it. But um, it's really lovely of them to give you a 10% off code so you can save on your order. And also if you use the links... Um, if you use this with the links below, um, you'll also be supporting me because they're affiliate links, so I'll get a small commission of um, anything that you purchase at no extra cost to you. So um, if you have used those links in the past or if you do use them, thank you so much because it really does make a difference, so I'm, I really do appreciate it. So, um, yeah, today's video we're looking at the 36 watercolour set. I'm not very good at watercolours really. I think... I find the best way to use watercolours is to make backgrounds for me, but um, I have tried properly using these as watercolours and creating like a piece of art, and I do want to keep practising more as well. Um, and in the past I've also had um, a couple of watercolour sets too, but I tend to just go for making backgrounds with them or painting something very simple and not really um, trying out watercolour to like the best of its ability so I do really want to try that again in the future um, but I've sort of done some bits and pieces for this video um, and also if you um, saw on Monday I put up my up close um, look at the Arteza gouache paints as well so they're kind of a different alternative to watercolours and I'll show you some comparisons and stuff in this video too so how the watercolours come they come in a um, cardboard box which has um, all of the colours on the back of the box and they're half panned, it's in a metal box and um, obviously the paint is reusable because it's dried into palettes but you can reactivate it with water and so you get the um, really lovely sturdy metal tin um, that has all of the pans inside it and when you open it you actually have this colour sheet inside it. Um, the colours are in a slightly weird order starting at green um, so I have uh, reordered my colours as well and I'll, I'll tell you how I reordered them but still know what colour is what if you know what I mean. So, so when you have them all of the colours the pans aren't named, so they don't have a name on their pans. So if you're going to reorganise them, but you still want to know which colour is which, the easiest way to do it is to take all of the pans out and write the names on the side of them first. Obviously going by this um, colour chart. If, you, if I move this one along, you can kind of see that one says Burnt Sienna on it. And so I've done that on all of them. So they all have their name written on them. And then I just rearranged them in a rainbow kind of order. And I went from red, orange, yellow, greens... Um, greeny blues, then blues, purples, pinks, and then I put all of the brownie tones at the end and also um, I, I tend to include yellow ochre as a brownie colour so I put that down there rather than having it with the yellows and then it goes um, dark, more dark browns and then finishes on black. So this is the actual colour order that I've put them in and that was how they came but obviously you can keep them in that order if you'd rather but I just... Um, I prefer things to be in a kind of a rainbow order and I just did it so it snakes round like that as well. So that's the order I've put them in. Um, if I hold that up you can uh, print screen the video if you want to know the actual order. My writing's not very neat on it but um, yeah. So so the Arteza watercolours are like a traditional pan watercolour where obviously the paint has been um, extruded and then placed into the pans. Um, and they're obviously a solid block of watercolour which you then um, activate with water and they do activate really quickly. So I've also been using them with the Arteza watercolour paper um, which is their expert one, which is their, their wood pulp expert one, not their cotton expert one. You'll know the difference because 
Um, this one comes with 32 sheets in a pack and the expert one only comes with 12 sheets in a pack so you'll know the difference um, and I've also it does come with a water brush as well I haven't actually used this water brush at all because um, I also asked for these water brushes so I've been um, focusing on these water brushes because they have that really cool um, more controlled uh, valve system so this one does have a push here um, which is it's a bit difficult to push and it's just within the plastic of the barrel uh, but these ones have this actual squishy um, button that you push to get more water down and they really do control the water um, I mean a lot of time I mean a lot of the water brushes I've tried they do control the water but then as the water as the brush starts to get dry because you've used the water up out of it instead of it being um, like a gradual trickle of water back into the brush as you're working you squeeze it and then you get a giant puddle coming out but with these ones they seem to um, when you press it it seems to just fill up this um, like valve portion and then it feeds out nice and evenly so um, I have really been enjoying these as well um, oh yeah I was also going to say prices for the watercolours so this 36 pan watercolour set is $29.99 on the Arteza UK website or $39.99 on Amazon so it's £1 more on Amazon but um, if you buy it on the Arteza website you'll get 10% off if you use my code and on the Arteza USA website it's $34.99 um, they also do the 12 pan set which in both cases is about £10 or dollars cheaper than the 36 pan set so it is definitely better value to get the 36 pan set but um, if you like mixing up your own colours maybe the 12 pan set is better for you or if you um, want it for travelling a 12 pan set is a much smaller box um, to travel with then um, I was also looking up you know the Gansai Tambi watercolours that a lot of people um, use in their videos um, the 36 pan set of that seems to be about a comparable kind of price to this 36 pan set um, and this is what the, the Gansai Tambi ones look like. They come in that big green box. But they also have um, three metallics down the bottom of them. And although these look like they're enormous pans, they really aren't filled as much as you think they are. Um, like, if you turn them over and look at the bottom of them, that bottom isn't as low down as it looks from the bottom. It's actually thick plastic, so you get... I reckon you probably get the same amount of paint in one of these enormous looking pans as you do in one of these small pans. So um, in that respect they're kind of um, equal prices really. And the Gansai Tambi watercolours are, if, you, if you've watched my gouache video, they are um, more in between a watercolour and a gouache. They come out thicker and less transparent. Um, but I wanted to show you that as a comparison. And my other watercolour set that I own, that I've actually had... 10 or 12 years now I can't remember if I bought it before my GCSEs or after them but um, this is the Cotman one and uh, this doesn't come with this many colours in you can still buy this set and I think it's 39 99 so it's like £10 more than um, the Arteza set but it actually only came with um, did it come with 16 yeah 4 times 4 is 16 so it comes with 16 pa half pans and it came with 3 separate tubes so you're paying £10 more for only like for it's not half the colours is it it's less than half the colours yeah less than half the colours really um, and then 3 extra tubes I think it was black white and ultramarine um, but I, I do really enjoy this set and you can see I've uh, refilled my pans with tubes of them and I even added in extra colours as well. I brought uh, some actual Cotman ones um, in a half pan and then uh, my mum had some different colours in tubes so I got I just bought some more half pans and then filled them up and put them in there as well but this did only come with half of the amount for more than the cost of this one um, and this one is a plastic palette too so if you drop this one too much um, you know it might it might crack and stuff whereas um, the Arteza one is um, metal so it's going to be um, really sturdy and I was also watching a few videos um, of other people looking at this watercolour set and I heard someone say they didn't like the the um, tin because this um, the flap that comes out was sticking up and like all of their paint would run back into their paint set but 
it doesn't stick up you can just push it mine was sticking up when I got it but I just pushed it down and now it bends all the way down to the table so I don't really know why they were complaining about that but um yeah the pans are um the both the palettes in it are really nice to work with because when you just have it flat on the table uh, your paint's just going to collect in the little um wells down here so it's not going to run off this side of the uh, palette either um, and obviously having a white palette is really nice to mix on um, if you did want to use a separate palette as well you can do that and also I heard someone say you can poke um, a pin down here and actually take this one off if you didn't want it but apparently it's really difficult to get it back on so um, you could take this palette off if you would rather use a separate palette to mix with as well um, you get a really nice selection of colours in this set too so you've got um, three ready tones you've got a a browny red, a pinky red and an orangey red so you've got um, really good mixing colours then you've got a couple of oranges, a yellowy orange quite a few yellows which is quite nice because um, if you know anything about colour theory um, I was trying to learn a bit more about this because we kind of got taught the basic colour theory at school where it's like um, red, yellow, blue are the primary colours and then green, purple, orange are the secondary colours and then in between them you've got the tertiary colours and stuff but I never realised about um, cool colours and warm colours that um, some colours that lean towards a different colour then mix better with another yeah, it, there's a lot of stuff about it but... Um, so these yellows, you've got a mixture of warm yellows and cool yellows with different undertones. So when you mix them with, like, say, the different blues that are in the set, you'll get different uh, variations of greens. And again, if you mix them with the different reds, you'll get different variations of oranges. Um, and if you mix the different reds with the different variations of blues, you'll get extra purple tones as well. And obviously, um, you can mix any of the... Um, primary or secondary colours together to get more greyy, uh, browny, earthy tones as well. So um, I think it's a really nice set for mixing your own colours as well. You've got a gorgeous selection of colours to choose from um, just out of the palette, but if you do like mixing your own colours, I think you've got a really nice selection um, to mix with as well. So I thought that was really good. Um, so if you watched my um, gouache video, which I put up on Monday, I did this little test. So I'll, I'll put this away. I was doing a little test because um, it's all very well someone telling you that watercolour or gouache is better for whatever reason. But I wanted to actually do like a comparison. So um, I, I'm, I do prefer the gouache after working with water and the gouache, watercolour and the gouache. But... Um, the differences between them and why you might prefer one over another depending how you like to work. Um, gouache is very opaque so you can work dark to light or light to dark and you can see here how well like yellow went on top of navy blue or yellow went on top of black and white on top of navy blue and white on top of black. Um, but when I tried it with the watercolours um, you can see that the yellow really disappears and so does the, well, the, even the green disappeared in the end, and this was the really light lemon yellow as well. But, um, say you were doing some kind of underwater painting, these kind of colours would give you really subtle, like, seaweed under the water and stuff. So there are definitely um, advantages and disadvantages of using watercolour or gouache, depending on what your style is, really. Because I quite like the cartoony, picture booky kind of style that you can create with a gouache paint, because you've got that opacity so you can easily layer different things on top of each other and stuff but um, with the watercolour you can get more subtle effects um, and you can layer the colours as well you do have to work light to dark working dark to light does not work with watercolours but um, you can get really nice layered effects especially when you work in really light um, watered down layers of paint which I'm not very good at because I'm not very patient at waiting for things to dry or I want the intense colour straight away so I end up using watercolours too thickly and then I don't really like the result um, but yeah so you definitely want to uh, practice with your watercolours a lot there are hundreds of videos on YouTube um, of people um, talking about different grades of watercolours and these are more of a student grade of watercolour like the Cotman ones um, I haven't done a direct comparison between the Arteza ones and the Cotman ones to see um, if one is more chalky than the other or one's more transparent than the other, but just looking at the colours, they seem um, 
similar and working with them they they feel similar to working with the cotton ones as well so I don't feel like there's too much of a difference in quality between them um, yeah so that was I think I've said everything I wanted to say about the set of paints but I think this is a really nice um, starter set of paints if you just want to get into watercolour and see um, how good you are at it or how well you get on with it or um, maybe you've seen um, other people on YouTube um, doing like really beautiful watercoloured greetings cards and where they do like the no line stamping or uh, heat embossing and then watercolour or just creating cool backgrounds I think this is definitely um, a really affordable set of watercolour paints to get to try out all those kind of techniques with so um, I've got quite a few examples of different backgrounds that I was trying and also a big painting that I did as well just having a go and seeing if I could properly use watercolours I did want to do some more bits and pieces but I haven't had a chance to but I'm sure um, I'll be doing some like my sped up style videos using them as well so I'll get all of the other bits and pieces ready I also wanted to mention quickly before I forget um, if you watch the I keep re referencing my gouache videos but I did one um, setting up a gouache palette which should have gone up on Wednesday um, and I was using this Arteza ruler and that's how I got the gridding system for the swatching um, I just found this ruler is so easy because you can just line up um, you can draw one line and then you move the ruler up and line up the first line you drew with one of the lines inside the ruler then you can draw the next line and it's going to be um, dead straight and parallel to one another without having to do too much measuring in the video I did show measuring because I was doing this with centimetres and this is an um, inch ruler but um, if you work in inches or if you just worked it out in inches rather than centimetres uh, this is very very useful for easily gridding up your card whether it's for a swatch card or whether it's for um, a background technique that you want to do so I just wanted to quickly mention that ruler too it's the um, 12 by 6 inch um, ruler and it's supposed to be a quilting ruler um, but it, I think it's going to be brilliant for crafting and I've really been enjoying it so far so just wanted to mention that too. So here are all of the little samples that I was doing with the watercolours. Now, um, again, I showed a lot of these techniques in the gouache video and I'm going to do a comparison for you as well so that you don't have to go and watch that video if you don't particularly want to. Um, so, the first technique is obviously one of the age-old techniques uh, with watercolours using um, salt on top of your watercolours to get this cool pitted effect. And I was working on... Uh, both sides of this Arteza watercolour that I showed you earlier, the watercolour paper. So this side is on the rough side of it and this side is on the smooth side of it. I don't think I said in this video actually. Um, I really love that watercolour paper because it is dual sided and it does work perfectly on both sides with the um, slight texture on one side and the smooth on the other. And actually I meant to do this in my other video and then when I was editing it I was like oh, I forgot. So I wanted to try and show the texture up close. So that is the textured side of um, this Expert Arteza watercolour paper and that is the smooth side. So you can see there is like hardly any texture on there at all. So it's really nice. So it's, you're basically getting hot pressed and cold pressed paper in one pad which is brilliant because um, you know you don't really have to decide which paper you want to use and try and find that pad of paper. You can just flip the paper over if you'd rather use hot press rather than cold press. So this is the salt technique, so all you do for this one is you wet your card first, you drop in your um, watercolour colours and then uh, where the largest puddles of water have accumulated you just sprinkle in some salt and um, I use, I just have a little jar of salt which has got sea salt and rock salt in it which has, uh, which means you've got a couple of different grain sizes or crystal sizes of the salt because um, I think it's rock salt that's bigger than sea salt. Um, I just find that gives a nice variation to the, the look and I wanted to show you um, how it works on both sides of this paper so you seem to get a similar result on the textured side and the smooth side obviously the textured side um, the paint does kind of seep into the texture so you get that extra um, 
sort of background texture within it as well uh, but it does work really nicely on both sides of the paper and then also as a comparison you can also do it with the gouache paints as well if you'd rather have maybe more vibrant colours or um, a more matte look, it's, I suppose it is just more the vibrancy um, but yeah it does work with the gouache paints as well then another age old technique to use with watercolours is the cling film technique so this is on the rough side and this one's on the smooth side um, and you can see that works equally as well on both sides of uh, the paper although maybe it is a bit stronger on the smoother side um, and it, that was the same with using it with the gouache as well. It seemed to be uh, give a stronger pattern on the smooth side. I suppose it's just because the pigment doesn't sort of stick to the texture of the card or something. Um, but with watercolour you get a slightly more delicate look to it. Um, you've got sort of more lighter areas um, of pigmentation and stuff. Uh, and with the gouache you've got more of a, um, a stronger... See, that's is that both... Yeah, that's both on the smooth sides. You do get a similar result, but you get more um, stronger pigmented colours using the gouache, but the technique is exactly the same. Then, um, so this was an experiment that I was doing. So there's this stuff called um, Oxgol. Um, I got this one. It's a Winsor & Newton one. I got it on Amazon. It was £6.46, I think I said it was. Yeah, six forty and no, seven forty six. sorry. Um... And it's just um, this solution that you you put four of, or three or four, three or four drops of it in your container of water that you're using to paint with. Um, and it increases the wettability and the flow of your paints. So often the really expensive watercolours will already do um, that. It will, as soon as you touch the pigmentation to the water, it will just like, properly burst out and the Gansai Tambis actually do that really nicely as well but um, some other more student quality paints um, like the Arteza ones they don't do it as much but if you want to get that look all you have to do is get some of this and put three or four drops in um, your glass of water that you're using to paint with and you get the same kind of results so let me organize these that was the rough side, the smooth side, and then this was the rough side and the smooth side with the oxygol. So the top is, if I move them this way, maybe easier. The top is without and the bottom is with. And again, showing you the differences, this side is the rough side and this side is the smooth side. So you can see there's not too much of a difference actually um, between the rough and the smooth side really. Um, but then when you get on to adding in the oxygol, it actually spread more with the rough side. I was expecting it to spread more with the smooth side of the paper, but you can definitely see a difference between how much the pigment um, spread within the water. Um, and, and you can tell that by like how much it's covered the card and everything. So this one definitely worked really nicely. It's definitely got a lot of the blue covering all of the background. So... Um, if you want to experiment with that more kind of a flowy background look, um, then this is the stuff that you need to make it flow more. So it's called Oxgol. Um, yeah, so that just yeah, it just helps with increasing the flow of your paints. Um, I just thought it was something good to show. I showed it in the gouache video as well, and it actually had the opposite effect. It seemed to stop the paint from flowing as much. Um, putting the oxygol in with the gouache so um, I think it's just a cool liquid to have on hand to try with different things and I'm sure if you tried this with when you're using your Nouveau Aquaflows or maybe even your Nouveau glitter markers and things um, you know just adding this to the water that you're using and I, I wanted to try I haven't actually done it but maybe adding a few of the drops to um, a spray bottle of water and trying it that way maybe with your shimmer powders seeing if that makes them burst out more than they usually do or something I don't know um, there's lots of different ways you can use it to try and help get your products to disperse more in the water because um, often actually um, it's good to have this I mean with watercolor card it doesn't matter so much because you can get your brush in there and move it around a bit but if you're working on like say an art journal which has really cheap paper that you don't want to um, add too much friction to because it'll peel the surface of the paper adding something like that to your water maybe in your spray bottle uh, might help because 
um, you're not having to move the pigment once you've put it on the paper. You're, you're spraying it with the water and that should help it flow. But um, it's obviously down to you experimenting with it as well. But I just wanted to share that too. Then, with the um, gouache paints, I also showed this. Um, um, you know you have like layering flower and leaf um, dyes. And you may not have all of these colours of cardstock. When I started out crafting, I only ever bought white card because um, I only ever used white card. If I wanted a coloured card, I just coloured it with my alcohol pens or with watercolours or aquaflows or anything else I was using. I didn't buy coloured card because I was like, oh, I don't want to spend that much on coloured card. I mean, I do now because crafting is my job and I get through a lot of cardstock and it's much quicker to have coloured card. But in the beginning, um, I never used to use coloured card and I always used to colour my own. So um, these watercolours are obviously brilliant for just creating your own bits of coloured card. Um, and you can either do it this way round where you've already coloured the card, um, so you're basically cutting the layers out as if it was actual coloured card, or you can um, die cut all of the pieces out of the same white cardstock first and then add your colours to them. And you can even stack them together and then add your colour and that gives a different look to these sort of layered dyes as well. This one is from the Alter New Peony Dream 3D um, flower set. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show that too because it's often the simple things that you forget with um, with paints and stuff. You're just like, oh, I've seen someone use it that way, so that maybe that's the only way that you can use it. But there are like hundreds of ways that you can use all of these products. So um, I just wanted to show you some of them. Then stamping with your watercolors works perfectly as well. All you do is um, take some of the paint from the pan, uh, spread it onto your glass cutting mat, uh, put your stamp in it and pick it up and stamp. And obviously the more water you've added to it, the runnier the look you're going to get or the lighter the colour and also um, the less like detail within your stamped image. So obviously here and here there was a bit more puddling of water so you lost some of the detail of the stamp. But um, it does give a really cool look. I really like how this turned out and it almost... It almost gives the same kind of look as oxides as well. So, you know, you can get that um, kind of a look without... Or maybe this is more distressing and the gouache was more oxides. But you can kind of get that same look without having to uh, buy loads of, like, the distress inks or the distress oxides. You can just stamp with your watercolours as well. So uh, I wanted to show that too. I really love how that turned out. I just really love that stamp as well. It's a tonic stamp, that one. They brought it out... Um, a couple of years ago, I think it was called like Delicate Detail or something like that. Um, but yeah, I really love that stamp. There's sort of that um, doily mandala kind of thing. Then, um, one of my favourite things to do with anything water-based is to create a stripy background. So I just thought I'd show that as well. And this is using it... Um, I think I did put the oxgol in this one. Yeah, I added the oxgol to see... Um, how much more it would flow together and I so I did actually do discrete um, stripes on this and then having the oxygol in it made it uh, flow together a bit more and when it was nearly dry I also came back in and flicked on um, some water to give it that mottled kind of a look as well so that literally hundreds of background ideas you can do with just with this one set of watercolours as well um, you've just got to like remember them I think that's the hardest thing with all these products is trying to remember the different techniques that you can do with them. So there's that cool technique. Then um, I did this with the um, the gouache one. I wanted to try this, you see. So I did the I did a bigger swatch of watercolour and I did it on this is on the rough side, this is on the smooth side of that watercolour paper. Let me move this out of the way. It's in my way. Um, and Believe it or not, I placed a stencil on top of both of these and sprayed them with loads of water and nothing happened because, again, there was no friction being applied because I, I just put the water on there and I left it. But if you do that, it doesn't really move, but um, I want to see if adding a bit of friction um, to it will actually um, bring up the colour. It should do, so hopefully it will work. But these, I mean, these have been drying for a few days now, so... Um, if you did this like straight after your background had just dried or whilst it was still damp, it should pick up the colour more. But So this is on the smooth side of the Arteza watercolour card. Um, and this is just one of their water brushes. And I'm just going to like move my brush over the surface 
to try and um, move some of that colour. I can see some of it is moving, and if you put it, yeah, if you put it on the kitchen roll, you can see that it is um, moving the pigment. We'll just see how much we can get up, and also. Um, if you let the card dry in between, you can go back in and repeat this process and try and lift up a bit more colour as well. So, I mean, that hasn't lifted that much, really. It was moving the colour around, but it hasn't lifted that much. That's on the smooth side. And we'll see if it does anything more dramatic on the rougher side. So maybe you do have to do this more when you've just... Um, been painting rather than leaving it yeah see it's not really it mean there is a bit of pigment coming off but not much really so definitely if you want to do that kind of a technique um, do it whilst uh, or after the after it's just dried or whilst it's still in like the drying process um, but I just wanted to show that as well that's in interesting for me too to to know that so that is trying to use friction to get the paint off of the surface then I also thought, let me get these the right way around, so this is on the smooth side, this is on the rough side, um, masking fluid. A lot of the time masking fluid really messes up your paper, um, like depending on what kind of masking fluid you've used. And I've got, th I have three different kinds of masking fluid, I'm just going to try and get some of that, no it's not really going to come off. Um, I've got three different kinds of masking fluid, the one on the left is the Pebio drawing gum, the one in the middle is the tonic masking fluid, the Nouveau one, and the one on the right is the Cosmic Shimmer uh, masking fluid. These two will both ruin your brushes if you use them. This one comes in a jar, this one comes in a bottle similar to a Nouveau drop, so you can actually squeeze it straight out of the bottle. But those two um, will definitely ruin your brushes. The drawing gum one is supposed to not ruin your brush. If you, as long as you don't let it get like clogged up in the ferrule of the brush, it does wash out with water quite nicely. So that is the Pebio one. Um, but in the past, um, when you've like been working on something and you've put masking fluid on it and then you've come back to it um, later, when you try to take the masking fluid off, sometimes it goes a funny colour, sometimes it really rips up the surface of the paper you've been working on. So I wanted to test out... Um, both sides of this Arteza watercolour paper and all three of the um, masking fluids that I have. So let's start with the Cosmic Shimmer one on the rough side. I didn't do a very good job of getting like a complete stripe of masking fluid but you know that's not too bad. It didn't pill up the paper so that's brilliant and on the smooth side I don't Oh no, it did, I think it did, yeah. It peeled up the paper on the smooth side, so the um, the Cosmic Shimmer one worked on the rough side, but it was peeling up the paper on the smooth side. Then this is the Tonic one, the Nouveau one. So that one's fine on the rough side of the paper as well. And no, it's pulling it up on the smooth side. Look at that, it's got paper stuck to the back of it. So I don't think the masking fluid is a good idea on the smooth side of this Arteza paper. But both of them are fine on the textured side. And then this is the Pebio drawing gum, which is usually um, my go-to one. Because it seems to be a thinner um, consistency, so you can get a better application, really. And because you're not worried about ruining a brush... Um, I find that it's a nicer one to use. And that's perfect on the textured side. No, it's pulling it up again. It is pulling it up. Yeah, so definitely a no-no to masking fluid on the um, smooth side of this Arteza watercolour paper. But it works, all three brands that I just tried work fine on the textured side. But the smooth side's not good for masking fluid. So if you want to do a piece of... Um, like a card where you've masked off something, done a cool background, then you're going to peel off the masking fluid. Definitely work on the textured side if you're using that Arteza watercolour paper. So that's a good good test, that one. Um, so let's move that mess out of the way. Then 
I was also playing around with them on the jelly plate. I have done watercolours on the jelly plate before and I really love the cool effect that you get with them. So this is literally just uh, taking some of the paint straight out of the pan and putting it onto the jelly plate and then turning it over and pressing it down and all the colours uh, merge together. So you get the perfect shape of the jelly plate um, and you get that gorgeous watercoloured look. So it's kind of like a cheats way of getting the perfect watercoloured shape on your card because you haven't got to have used masking fluid or masking paper or something to get the circle. Uh, but you've still got that cool watercolour look. And when you add more watercolour to the jelly plate, you get um, obviously a paler look and you still get these cool watercolour effects. And that's kind of made by pulling the plate off of it as well, this texture. Um, and then a comparison to the gouache. So using the gouache straight from the tube onto the plate it gave this strange kind of texture like a lacy texture and even when you press the plate down that texture didn't disappear so it beaded up on the surface this beads up on the surface but because it's so wet when you press down on it to get the print it all merges together but with gouache you basically what you're seeing on the plate is pretty much what you're going to get on the paper and again when you add more water that effect is more evident um, but every time I've used watercolours on a jelly plate, you always get this gorgeous, um, effortlessly blended kind of a look. So it's really um, like a cheat's way of getting like that perfect blended watercolour background, really. Uh, so that is on the jelly plate. Then um, I was having a play with just doing some um, hand-drawn kind of doodles. This is on the watercolour card again, the Arteza stuff on the textured side and I was playing with the um, miniature brushes so these it comes in a set of uh, 15 they're the miniature brushes from Arteza um, and they come in loads of different sizes obviously you get 15 of them and there's loads of different types of them as well you get I think you get five spot ones um, five round ones and five liner ones and let me find that other liner one one of them, yeah, this one's got really long bristles. So you even get one that's got that gorgeous long bristle. And the cool thing about a liner brush is because they have such long bristles but they go to a fine point, they hold a lot of paint so you can get that really nice flowing line um, as you're painting. But also the detail as well because there's such a fine point to them. Um, so those were the brushes I was playing with um, for this one. I think... Actually, I think I started with the water brushes. The background ones, I was using the smallest round water brush for that. And then um, then I moved on to the uh, finer um, liner brushes to do these sort of uh, ferny kind of things. This was just all out of my head, so I don't know what they are. But um, yeah, so that was a mixture of using a water brush and the fine line brushes. Then my final little experiments... Uh, this was actually the first thing I did with these. I wanted to see how well they'd work for galaxies, and they work brilliantly. This was the textured side of the Arteza watercolour paper, and this was my normal smooth white card that I um, always use, and they work really nicely on that as well. And this was quite a few layers. I think I added two layers of colour and three layers of black on these ones. So um, even with that many layers, they've both held up um, really well the card with this paint as well and then I just used um, some white acrylic paint and some of the Nuva Aqua Shimmer to splatter on for like the starry look for the galaxy um, but you know just a simple set of watercolours to create some galaxy backgrounds as well you know they're a really affordable um, set of paints that you can do so many different things with like this could keep you busy for ages if you have the imagination and remember all the techniques that you can do with them it's going to keep you busy for a long time um, so that's the that uh, technique as well um, then I've got one more thing to show you but I actually just thought I want to do some tests actually so I've got this piece of watercolour card here I also asked Arteza for some of their fine liner pens um, and these, this was just the set of black. You got 12, I think. Yes, 12 fine liner pens, all in black, these ones. You can get them in um, colours as well. But I tend to use these black fine liners a lot. Um, the ones I've been using at the moment are either the Wilkinson's fine liners or the other one I've been using. No, I can't find one. I've, I've used these ones in the past, the Triplus. Both of them are like completely blunt on their ends now because I've used them so much and the other one I've been using is the Tiger one and I'm not sure of the uh, 
nib size of the Wilkinson's one bar or this one actually I think maybe that's 0 0.3 but the Arteza ones are 0 0.4 which is the same as the Tiger one that I've been using this is from Flying Tiger in the UK um, and I, I like using these as well but I just thought maybe I could do like a little comparison because I wanted to see I don't I think these are water based so I think they would smudge with watercolour but I didn't actually try it in the end um, so if I go um, Arteza Fine Liner and then the Tiger fine liner. And then the Wilco fine liner. I reckon they are the same thickness. They all look about the same when you're writing with them. And then I don't know if this one's going to write because they're all so dead, these ones. I've used them so much in the past. Um, I cannot spell Stadler. Oh, this one's good actually. Oh, that must be a new one. A E D okay. so That actually looks like a 0 0.4 as well. They look all the same thickness really. If anything, the Tiger one looks a bit thinner. Um, and that's the one that actually states it's 0 0.4 as well. Um, but anyway, let's just see how... Um, I think they're all water-based. I'm pretty sure they're all water-based. None of them are permanent. Let's just see how they do move with water. I just wanted to test this out. And as I'm doing an Arteza video, I might as well test it. Yeah, so if you were to use the Arteza fine liners with your watercolouring, you're going to want to add your outlines after your painting is dried. Um, and then let's just see the other one. This is a matter of interest. The Tiger one does it too. So does the Wilkinson's one. And so does the Stadler one. Um, so they all, they all actually blend out to a slightly different grey tone. But yeah, they're all water-based ones. So the Arteza ones work very similar to those other three brands that I've um, had in the past. So um, yeah, they're just as, as good as them. And they've got a really nice um, strong nib on them as well. Um, it's a really nice strong one. I mean, I've, I was using this one um, to do all of the writing on my swatch cards and stuff. And I haven't dented or flattened the end yet so that's always a good thing because I'm very good at killing the ends of pens um, that one was a good one usually they end up like this with a flat end, they're supposed to be curved on the end but they end up completely flat because I press too hard when I write um, but yeah I just thought I'd show that little comparison as well so the Arteza fine liners are definitely water based so if you want to use them with your watercolours you're definitely going to want to do your outlines afterwards or write on top of it afterwards um, but if you want to use them with your alcohol pens they'd be brilliant because you want a water based fine liner to work with your alcohol pens so say you haven't stamped your image uh, very well um, you can go over the areas you've missed and with the Arteza one and fill them back in again so that's really good and I think those fine liner pens work out like a pound each so they're pretty good value for money as well so then the one last thing I think I was gonna show um, I might actually just show you a few more bits with the watercolours but um, I'm gonna put up a video I think because it kind of turned out alright um, called like I followed a frugal crafter tutorial using Arteza watercolours or something um, so she did, she put this video up um, well it's probably like a month or more ago now um, and I really liked um, the picture that she'd done and I thought I'm so rubbish at watercolours I really want to see if I can follow along one of her tutorials um, I'm still rubbish at watercolours because it was very difficult to follow along um, but I think it does depend on the kind of paper that you use like she was using a cotton paper and I wasn't so all my water was drying really quickly and I couldn't get the blending done like how she was doing it and all that kind of stuff but um, it was fun to follow along and see um, if I could kind of recreate some of the bits and pieces she did and I was trying to scratch in with the um, gift card and stuff and go back in with some white goo ash and bits and pieces to try and do the, the spikes on the cactuses and stuff and I even went in with some coloured pencils they're really rubbishy coloured pencils but um, it kind of made it just waxy on it but yeah it was it was fun to do I mean it took me maybe two hours to to do this but it was it was a good experiment to really 
um, use the watercolour paints and see how they work together. I do really love how the um, cactuses came out with that. It was yellow ochre and it was supposed to be sap green, but there's no sap green in this. This is why I struggled with her tutorial, because she said use ultramarine, which this palette doesn't have, sap green, which the palette doesn't have. So I was trying to mix colours to look like those colours whilst trying to follow along as well. So it was a little bit tricky to do, but um, I wanted to give it a go and see... Um, if I could do it and I, I did quite enjoy it and there's one of her gouache ones that I'm, I quite want to follow as well um, so I might do that at some point in the future but I just find with watercolour it never comes out how I want it to like I have a vision in my head of how I think my painting's going to turn out but it never looks like that when I actually go to do it I think it's just because I'm too impatient with watercolours you're supposed to start off really light and build up the layers to get that depth of colour but I feel like I'm um, too impatient and I try to get the strong colour straight away and then you end up getting that chalky look with watercolours because you've used them too thickly. Um, yeah so um, I'm sure I will be practicing a lot more with watercolours over the next few months or years um, but yeah I just thought I'd show that as well so this should be a video if I like the footage of it it should be a video um, just showing how I was trying to follow along um, with a tutorial um, and maybe I should just show you yeah I'll be back in one second okay so I thought I'd just show you um, how well the paint activates from the pans of the watercolour as well so I'm going to use the water brushes just because I've got them here and I really like them actually so what colour should I go for um, let's do a blue because that shows up alright on my camera this one is turquoise um, so you can see I hardly like scrubbed on that pan at all and you've got this much colour already and obviously that is a bit thick because I've just taken that straight off the pan it's a bit thick um, so I found the best way to do it is to take some of the um, watercolour straight from the pan mix it with water on the palette and then you get a much more actual watercolour-y kind of look when you use it you can see the difference there. This is how I always used to use watercolours and probably why I didn't like the results that I get but you should really add the water hence why they're called watercolours um, so I need to learn that too but um, yeah so that gives you much more of a watercolory look and obviously you can add a bit more of the pigment into that amount of water to get um, a slightly darker shade if you wanted to and obviously uh, once this is dry you can layer over it to get the deeper shades in certain places as well and it's the same for all the colours really um, that you want to make sure you're using that water with them because otherwise you do get that chalky look um, I don't think it's the paint's fault a lot of the time I think it's the user, user's fault like because I'm I definitely do it I'm, I'm always so impatient and I try and get really thick deep intense colour straight away so I have to remember to water things down it's, it is kind of easier when you're using things like um, the aquaflows and stuff because they're in a liquid form so you don't really get any problems with a chalky effect because there's no way you can take too much pigment to water but um, yeah with watercolours I think that is one of my main problems with it but um, also the watercolour paint reactivates really nicely on the palette that looks a bit terrible there but as soon as you um, add some water back into it it does activate really nicely again um, then what else should I say getting water everywhere um, so with the and maybe I'll just show you with the wet and wet wet on wet techniques that I was doing on those little samples um, if I take the wide water brush the wide water brush is really good for getting that really quick coverage of water um, and then if I go back to this one again and take some of that um, blue you can just dot some of it in see that flowed really well actually um, you can just dot it where you've added the water and that's how you do that kind of wet in wet sort of technique and then you can go back in um, with another colour as well and add that in to the different areas too to get a cool wet and wet splodgy background and then if, you, um, if you've done that and you don't have the oxygol uh, to make it blend more um, 
you could just take some water and uh, spray that to try and get it to move around a bit more. Um, and like I was saying, if you are working in like um, a cheap art journal sketchbook or something, um, just because you want to experiment and play around in it, but you're worried about um, coming back in with your paintbrush and moving this paint too much, because it will peel up the surface of the paper um, having a spray bottle of water is a really great idea because um, I haven't done any art journaling in a while but the one I use the one I mainly use is um, a really cheap one I got from Tiger and it's actually really thin paper um, and so you'll often see me when I um, those videos are kind of old now but when I um, was colouring the pages on them I was using spray inks because all you have to do is spray it and then leave it to dry and you're not agitating the surface of the paper and like possibly breaking up the fibres in it so um, yeah having a spray bottle is uh, brilliant with watercolours as well uh, let's see if we can try and layer up this to kind of show you see when I'm yapping on I can wait for things to dry, but when I'm just sitting here by myself, um, I'm very impatient about waiting for things to dry. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this up-close look at the um, Arteza 36 pan watercolour set. And all of the links to all the bits and pieces I was showing in this video will be in the description below. And if you can't find it, there should be a little arrow um, that you can just click and the whole description will like appear below the video. And I'll make sure this code is at the top of that description and I'll put it down here as well. Um, and if you use this after clicking my links, you should get 10% off your order. And it's Crafty Potential 2 and it's valid until the 28th of August 2019 as well. So um, I'm, I'm hoping you'll take advantage of that offer because, you know, might as well get 10% off if you want to try one of these products. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed seeing all the different bits and pieces uh, that I've done with this watercolour set. And thank you so much for watching. I feel like this video is probably really long, just like my gouache ones as well. So um, I really do appreciate you watching all the way to the end if you find these uh, videos interesting. And also, um, if there's anything else you want to see with these Arteza products or any of the other Arteza products that they do, if you want to see an up-close video on them, um, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do and try and get hold of um, those products as well or um, show you the other techniques that you're after with all of the products I've already shown you. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video. Bye!